Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 10.2, non-conformity and corrective action. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand and implement into your own organization or industry. Before I get started on the clause, I think it's important to understand the definition of a non-conformity. After all, if we don't know how to recognize one, then we won't know when to action, will we? ISO 9000, which is the fundamentals and vocab guide for ISO 9001, states that a non-conformity is a non-fulfillment of a requirement, and the definition of a requirement is a need or expectation that is stated generally implied or obligatory. So these requirements that we are bound to conform with may come from our customers, product or legal requirements, ISO standard requirements, or even our own quality management system requirements. Put simply, we need to identify and understand what our requirements are and then follow them. When we don't, that is a non-conformance. This will now help us as we move through the clause requirements. So let's get started. Let's take a look at what clause 10.2 wants us to do. The clause starts off with subclause 10.2.1 stating, when a non-conformity occurs, including any arising from complaints, the organization shall A, react to the non-conformity and as applicable, one, take action to control and correct it, two, deal with the consequences. This action and dealing with the consequences comes from the actions identified and conducted from clause 8.7, control of non-conforming outputs. These few little points here in clause 10.2 just reiterate and summarize what clause 8.7 requirements are. So I'm not going to go into detail again here. Be sure to watch that video later if you need more information. So now we know that we have to deal with the consequences of a non-conformance as the first step. This is normally referred to as a correction. It is not the long-term fix or corrective action. It is just getting it under control initially. The next part of the clause is where we look at the long-term fix or corrective action. Therefore, this clause states that the organization shall B, evaluate the need for action to eliminate the cause or causes of the non-conformity in order that it does not recur or occur elsewhere by one, reviewing and analyzing the non-conformity, two, determining the causes of the non-conformity, three, determining if similar non-conformities exist or could potentially occur. You will have noticed that the overarching goal is to prevent the non-conformity from recurring or occurring elsewhere. And this is done by reviewing and analyzing the non-conformity to determine the cause or causes of the non-conformity. By doing this, we also have the opportunity to find out whether there have been similar non-conformities that have already occurred or have the potential to occur. For example, if we have a piece of equipment, just some small nondescript item that is meant to come out of the production process green, but on this particular occasion, it has come out red. That is a non-conformance. Our first step is to deal with the consequences. So that might be to put the now red item in a quarantine section so that it is not used. We might tag it appropriately as well, just to make sure. We then also isolate the machine that produced the red item to ensure that no more come out the wrong color. The next step is to review and analyze what occurred and how it actually happened. This might involve following the set process, interviewing operators, pulling the machine apart, checking paint stock and codes, checking the order and so on. Once we've gone through this process, we should have identified the root core cause of this issue. And then we can move on to implementing a corrective action that should prevent it from recurring or occurring elsewhere, which leads us into the next part of this clause, 
where it states that the organization shall C, implement any action needed, and D, review the effectiveness of any corrective action taken. So not only do we implement the corrective action, but we should also be giving it sufficient time to be followed and used so that we can review whether it has effectively prevented the issue from recurring. Therefore, in this example, if we identify that the root cause of this issue was the process for setting up the machine matching to a correct color code, then the process would be updated training may be conducted and then the new process is followed and monitored for a period of time, normally based on risk, to ensure that the new process does ensure that the correct color code is always matched to the correct job. Then to finalize the considerations for this subclause of 1021, the last few points state that the organization shall E, update risks and opportunities determined during planning if necessary, F, make changes to the quality management system if necessary, and finally, corrective action shall be appropriate to the effects of the non-conformities encountered. These few points are saying that when there has been a non-conformity, does this mean that there are additional risks or opportunities that may have been missed in your initial assessment of the process or operations? And if so, does this change your quality management system and associated procedures? This provides that final loop back from an operations level into a systems level. And of course, the corrective action taken should be at a level that is suitable for what actually occurred. For example, a corrective action of firing all of the machine operators for that single item coming out red instead of green is not proportionate to the actual issue, and in particular, even the root cause. The next subclause, section 1022, goes on to state that the organization shall retain documented information as evidence of A, the nature of the nonconformities and any subsequent actions taken, B, the results of any corrective action. Okay, simple. Any nonconformities identified need to be recorded as to what they were and what actions were taken, including the results, successful or otherwise, of the corrective action taken. This is normally in the form of a nonconformance register or improvement register. You can call it whatever you want as long as it does record this information at a minimum. Other information that this register might also include that is helpful is who is responsible, created or occurrence date, due date for corrective action, due date for review of implemented corrective action, any links to photos or investigations, identified by category, which might be internal audit, external audit, daily operation, customer complaint, and so on. These are just a few additional fields that I have come across that help with analyzing ongoing improvements. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your own management system? Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me. <music>